Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to update the charts for Chainlink and Litecoin. I know you guys have been asking for that quite a lot lately. So let's dive into that. First, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. It goes a long way to helping out the channel and allows you to see the content come out as some of it is time sensitive, especially when we're looking at charts. If you find value from the video throughout any time in the video, hit that like button down below. You know what to do. You know the drill. Let's dive into the first part of the video. First thing I want to show you is the Google Trends. Now Google Trends tells us what people are searching for in Google. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get huge spikes in the price, but in the history we've seen it correlate somewhat very close to spikes in the price in those cryptocurrencies. Looking back at Chainlink, we had a top here which is the red line at uh, 50. This is in comparison to Litecoin now, and especially in Litecoin search volume lately. But this was the top for Chainlink at the time around the middle of August. And as we'll see on the chart, the middle of August was a top in the price of Chainlink. Now currently we are below that peak in Chainlink search volume. However, the dollar value has increased a lot on Chainlink. Looking at Litecoin, we're at all time high search volumes, just on a bit of a downtrend at the moment. So I haven't caught the search engine optimization strategy here to make Litecoin videos when everyone is searching for them. And that is one thing I want to mention to you as well. Although Litecoin can probably will go to $1,000, there will be peaks in Litecoin and in many of these cryptocurrencies. What the, the deal is, what the strategy is on YouTube is to make videos when people are searching for them, not necessarily when there are good opportunities to buy. This doesn't always mean that there aren't good opportunities when someone makes a video about a cryptocurrency, but I just want to make mention to the newbies. I know a lot of the old guys probably see that as well, but when things are being searched for really heavily, it makes sense to make a video on it because your video will be seen by more people. So keep that in mind when there is a lot of uh, search volume for a particular cryptocurrency, like we're seeing with Cardano at the moment. If you haven't seen it, I've got a, many videos on the channel about Cardano. And it's not to say that it's not a good altcoin because we've seen thousands of a percent return on this altcoin. But it's just to be a little bit wary of some of the games that are played on YouTube. Not to say that I don't do it myself. I like to make content that people are going to watch so I can get feedback from you as well. But I'm not going to tell you to buy something which I don't think is right. And then that leads to people not liking my content, which I can wear because it's not financial advice. And if I see something on the chart, which I think doesn't look so good, I'm not going to say that I'm going to look at buying it. So keep that in mind as well. Let's have a look across at the first chart and we got Litecoin Ethereum. I bring this up because Litecoin Ethereum has just been on a massive decline and it has been better to hold Ethereum since 2019 as opposed to Litecoin. Litecoin was better to be held just for a short period of about a year from middle of uh, 2018 to middle of 2019 when it was doing better against Ethereum. This was around the news that Litecoin's halving was happening. And since then, it has just gone on a massive downtrend against Ethereum. Maybe we'll see a peak like this again. Maybe we won't. So that's something we've got to keep in mind as well. Maybe we'll only see a little bounce. Ideally, we want to see Litecoin break through this area here and just come above the, the downwards trend. That's Litecoin against Ethereum. Litecoin against Bitcoin has been another, I guess, really disappointing move. We looked at it back here in uh, late December, early January, looking for this to break out. We're still in the downwards trend, the falling wedge. So it's not, not such a bad thing. And we've got a better entry price against Bitcoin, but it has continued to bleed out during this period when there have been other periods to uh, make more gains, say something against Cardano. So Litecoin has been very weak against Ethereum. It's been weak against Bitcoin, but its dollar value has increased. That's because Bitcoin's gone up. That's the main thing. You could have held Bitcoin and made similar, if not better gains through this entire period. Actually, you would have made better gains holding Bitcoin because Bitcoin was at 10 or 15,000 and now it's sitting at 45,000, peaked at uh, over $58,000. So from 10 to 58, massive gains, very, very good gains. So that's something to keep in mind. The search volumes are high. Uh, but the charts aren't showing that it's strong against Ethereum or Bitcoin. Doesn't mean it's not a bad time. I think it is still an, it's still in a good place for Litecoin versus Bitcoin. 
because we're still in the same pattern. We're in this falling wedge and at some point we will break out. What we don't want to see is it to break out to the downside because then it's just been a pointless investment. So we need to have a cutoff point to say when this is out. And in that previous video, I was looking at these lows of 0.0038 thereabouts, even these lows here around 0.037, and we've broken beneath those. So this is really getting to that point of basically cut it at a loss or hope and hold on while this pattern continues to form and just know that we could get all the way down to 0.0031 before we see some sort of spike out against the trend. So that's an important one to note. That's Litecoin. A dollar, like I've said, dollar value looks good. Probably go to a thousand bucks. It makes for great thumbnails. It makes for great headlines, titles, all that sort of stuff. Just know those things that go on in the weird world of crypto YouTube. Let's have a look at Chainlink. Move our attention over to Chainlink. And the dollar chart is up, but it's not as strong as we would like. With that said, it's not, it's not such a bad position because we've come so far from the all-time high. We've spiked into the all-time high, or the previous all-time high, which is sitting at around uh, $20.70, and then peaked at around $37.40. So this is still looking strong because we're not breaking down beneath the old tops. We're finding them as support. Previous resistance becomes support. That's a good sign. Also, this Fib range spiked into the 50%, fantastic. We have, uh, we're going to close above it in about a day and a half, two days. So we've got to keep an eye on that. We definitely want to be above that $22 level. That would be great for Chainlink. And from this point, we want to see some sort of uh, reaccumulation above the old all-time high. Basically, something in this vicinity, whether it's this low, this high, it's all good. As long as we're above that level, that's a good sign. And we can reaccumulate, then go on our break to the upside again. And this happens to be chain links pattern. We can see it's tanks starts to reaccumulate and moves again. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, it takes off and we get a nice big move. So it's basically tripled. Now it's pulled back. So double and a half since these lows. And if you were buying it around eight bucks, now you've tripled your money. So it's still looking pretty decent for chain link overall. The other thing I wanted to show here, and I'll probably remove these lines in future videos, is that chain link likes $4.50, $9 levels. It's an odd thing, right? Nine bucks was found support resistance. You could call it $8, but really $9 is where it found resistance through here at these highs and then found support again, found support again. Now you've got these multiples of nine. You could call it multiples of 450, but as we get higher, it's obviously going to be the bigger bracket. So multiples of nine, multiples of 450 look good. Even 150 was holding the market up. So three lots of 150 go into 450. Two lots of 450 go into nine. Two lots of nine go into 18. Three lots of nine go into 27. If you've done maths in school, you would know that these multiples all go together. Why I bring this up is because we could be looking at 45 as another uh, resistance point. And we're currently at 25. So it's not a double but it's looking all right. 45 might be another resistance point. Uh, throw another $9 onto that and get us at around $54, which gets us close to our 161%. We keep scrolling the chart up. Uh, we move in $9 increments, 45, 54. Let me get the horizontal, 54, 63, 72, and so on. So we can get to somewhere up around uh, 81, 90 bucks. This is all the stuff that I'm going to be watching. I'm definitely watching the $4.50 increments and more so the $9 increments now that we are so much, uh, we have such big ranging bars. Uh, but I thought I'd bring that to your attention and maybe you'll keep an eye on that yourself as well. So Chainlink overall looks solid on the US dollar. I wouldn't say it's super strong, but it's solid. We're above these levels and we're holding. We're sitting around old uh, areas of resistance. So that's a good sign. Let's have a look at Chainlink versus BTC. This was the area that we were buying in or I was buying in back in uh, January because I saw this as a bottom. I wasn't sure whether it's going to be a super strong bottom because I don't see the volume in here. Having said that, we're not always sure that the volume data is 100% accurate. So overall, it looks reasonably good. Now it has moved above this level Great, it moved above the resistance zone of around 50,000 Satoshis, 52,000. And I've got a low in here of around 35,000 Satoshis. Right now we have broken these previous lows 
This is on a weekly chart because we're looking at macro views to make macro gains, not the short term time frames. And looking here, we had a low at around 51,000. We've broken through that this week, obviously with Bitcoin crashing, alts bleed, but we have bounced above it again. We're at 52,700. So that looks pretty good to me. We, if we can hold this level, reaccumulate above here, then I like this as another zone to continue uh, buying into Chainlink, especially when people aren't talking about it as much as other cryptos like Cardano. We just go back to our Google Trends. Chainlink is moving up in dollar value, but it's not being spoken about anywhere near as much as Litecoin. And if we throw in Cardano, I'm sure we'll get massive volume. There you go. Cardano is sitting at similar heights to, uh, to, to Litecoin. So that's old Litecoin there, pretty much exactly the same as Litecoin was back in early January. And that just puts Chainlink at the, at the same spot. But those two coins are being spoken about a lot more, that is Litecoin and Cardano, than Chainlink. So maybe Chainlink might be a good time for reaccumulation if you don't already have any, do your own research, not financial advice. These are just the pieces that I put together to try to understand whether there's a good buying opportunity in a strong project, which we know has good fundamentals. The last thing I want to have a look at on Chainlink is our log scale, and I will remove the volume. This is the all time low on the Bitcoin chart. That's what we have here on the Binance chart for Chainlink Bitcoin, connecting it to this other major low here in September 2019. This line I like because it's showing a lot of support and resistance and the price tends to range around it uh, when it comes back from its parabolic runs. And we've seen that again, it's bounced off this level. I wouldn't be surprised if we got to move across into this level. And this could be some time. We, maybe we're here until July, August of this year on the Bitcoin value for Chainlink because Chainlink continues to go up in its USD value because Bitcoin continues to go up and it just holds its Bitcoin value and rises in USD value. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it holds here and moves up again and we don't meet this line till somewhere else in the future in 2022. Who knows? But it's continuing to increase. So the idea is that we're going to continue to increase our Bitcoin holdings as well as our USD holdings by holding Chainlink and it moves in different uh, cycles to some of the other altcoins which make it a great investment for the portfolio to balance things out. So Chainlink... I still like the look of if we would happen to break down from this level, that would be dire. But if we happen to break down from where we are now, come under the trend line back above it, to me, that's no issue. But I think this level needs to hold. Otherwise, we're probably better off being in some other cryptocurrency because we're just losing too much value against Bitcoin. Now, for you guys who have watched this far into the video, I want to leave you with a little special crypto that has been around since 2017. And this one could be setting up for a massive move like Cardano. So you heard me talk about the other Cardano killer in yesterday's video. And so I'm gonna make another video on that now. And this is IOTA. So if you've been around since 2017, you would have heard of IOTA. It has the Tangle technology. So it's like a hedge against blockchain because it's supposed to be a hell of a lot faster, a lot better speeds and everything else to do with it. You know, all of the buzzwords, right? Since then, IOTA's had quite a lot of problems. There was a lot of problems with the technology, with the company, not getting back to people, all this sort of stuff. But the chart looks pretty good. We can see that it, we've been on a downtrend for ages. Now we have broken out of this particular downtrend. And what is more important here is the horizontal. This is the key. Anyone can draw a trend line through this area and say, well, we broke above it. But you could basically take this trend line and say, yay, we broke above it here. We broke above it here. Uh, we broke above it here. You know, it came down, broke above. Yay, we're, we're, <laughs> we're in the clear. And then it dumps. You get the point here. You know, we draw a trend line across any of these. And you could say it about anything. The, the major point I've got here is... This is the support that it broke down just for a couple of months. And we have now burst above the horizontal support, which is more critical than a downwards diagonal sloping trend line. It's done both. It's broken above the diagonal first, now the horizontal. So this was the support level that was being held since 
uh, July, August 2019, we had one hit, two, three, four, five was the break, retest, failed. But within a couple of months, we have broken above it and now we are using it as support. So this is a fantastic sign of a strong setup, especially when we break this level here, the previous swing, and we had a first higher swing low just here. That's a, that's a fantastic sign. This has broken that level. So that was another swing. And so the trend is beginning to reverse and we had uh, weakness on the breakdown, strength here, strength on the diagonal break, strength on the horizontal break, this is an early stage, very, very, very early stage, strong sign of a setup. So keep that on your cards, put it on your watch list, do your research on IOTA. This is the IOTA Bitcoin chart too, so we should be gaining in a hell of a lot of Bitcoin value from this point. I'll take a few of these off the chart so we can see what's going on here. And let's use our measuring tool to see what gains we can possibly expect. I'm using this as a resistance, this is a resistance, this level is a resistance. What we can see here is 150% on our Bitcoin, 320%. These lows, 500%. These highs, 1,100%. We want to take it all the way from the bottom to the top. There's 1,300 and to these levels, I wouldn't count those, but there's 2,000% return on the Bitcoin to get to those all old all time highs. Now I don't think it's gonna get there. I think if we can get a doubling or a tripling on our Bitcoin, we're looking pretty good. It's probably gonna get somewhere to this point of 500%. So maybe I'm gonna hold a little bit more just to see that go on through. But I wanna take some of that off the table as well. This is the safety in getting in early, which I talk about in every single video, get in early, find these trends. I talked about trend words at the beginning. Trend, looking at the trend words is usually when the trend is too late. You can already see the prices are up a thousand percent from their lows. No one is talking about IOTA at the moment and to prove that, I haven't looked at it yet, but I guarantee it's not gonna show up. IOTA, no one's talking about it at the moment. It had a spike in November of 2020 and now no one's talking about it. What happened in November of 2020? November of 2020, IOTA broke down, small spike into the resistance and then broke down. So people look like they were searching it because they're thinking what the hell is going on with IOTA right now? Now I'm sure there's big news, I haven't looked at it, I can just tell from the chart. It tried, it failed. Now we're above, strength is there, no one's talking about it. I'm gonna continue to follow IOTA. You, if you want to purchase it, I have links to Binance and SwiftX for the Aussies in the description down below and you can also purchase Cardano, Litecoin and a lot of other altcoins with SwiftX in Australia and of course Binance. So go and check those out down below. We'll continue to track IOTA. It's looking fantastic. We've looked at it at the USD. It's it's up. Look at that. Nice breakout against Ethereum. Nice breakout against BNB. Tanked because we know BNB has gone on a big run. So we're going to wait for this to come back and I assume it may be something like the Cardano chart where we saw Cardano begin to move against Binance. Looking good, Ethereum, USD, BTC. That could be the next Ethereum killer, Cardano killer if Cardano continues with its path. Let's keep track of it. I really like the look of it. And uh, from there, we'll wrap the video up. Thank you for joining me. If you found value, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bell notification icon, all the videos, you know the jazz. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to see an update of the retirement fund portfolio and daily Q&As. I'll get onto that now. Lastly, the Investor Accelerator membership. If you want to know how to trade like this and invest your profits, rotating them into other asset classes, go and check out the Investor Accelerator membership down below. 15% off for a limited time. Check it out. I will see you guys over there or in the next video. And until then, have more fun to get more done.